Hello everyone, and welcome back to our reading of Lost Treasures. Today's chapter, The Lost Dutchman Mine in Arizona. Several years after Enrico's death, one of his relatives, Don Miguel Peralta, was rescued from a vicious fight in a bar in Mexico by two men. Jacob Waltz, nicknamed the Dutchman, and a German by the name of Weiser. Grateful for his life, Don Miguel bought them many drinks and ended up telling them about Enrico's discovery in the mountains of Arizona. He also produced a sketch map drawn by Enrico, showing where the mine was located. Don Miguel suggested that the two men should help him find it. So, in 1871, Don Miguel, Waltz, and Riser arrived in Phoenix, where they bought mules and provisions before setting off into the mountains. They returned with ore containing gold to the value of $70,000. Don Miguel went back to Mexico with his share, bought a farm and lived in comfort for the rest of his life. Waltz and Riser gambled and drank their money away and decided to go back to the mine for some more gold. When they reached it, they were surprised to find two Mexicans, men who had worked for Don Miguel Peralta. A fight broke out, and Waltz and Riser shot the two Mexicans. Two weeks later, Waltz arrived in Phoenix alone. He claimed that they had been attacked by Apaches. He had escaped death by hiding in a deep ravine, but his partner had got shot full of arrows. Waltz was now the only person who knew the exact location of Enrico Peralta's mine. Soon after his return, he paid a considerable amount of money into a bank in Phoenix. A little later, he moved in with a Mexican woman named Julia and lived a life of luxury wanting for nothing. Whenever his money ran low, he would go back alone to the mine in the mountains. In September 1891, Waltz, now 80 years old, became very ill and died the following month. On his deathbed, he told Julia how to find the mine in case she needed any money. Julia then summoned her father and brothers and started to search for it. The instructions Waltz had given her were too complicated and they got lost. Time and time again they looked for it but found nothing. Eventually they gave up and called it the Lost Dutchman Mine in memory of Jacob Waltz. Nothing was heard of the mine until 1930, when Adolf Wolf set off to locate it. After he had been gone a month, his son set out a search party. They could not find any trace of his father. Six months later, someone came across a human skull with a bullet between the eyes. A headless corpse was also found two kilometers away. The police decided that these were Adolf Wolf's remains. In 1932, two treasure hunters in the Superstition Mountains were shot at by an unknown sniper, but escaped unhurt. Then, in 1946, James Cravey came to Phoenix and spent a lot of time gathering information about the mine. He became convinced that he knew its exact whereabouts. So, on June 16, 1947, he hired a helicopter to fly him to a canyon in the mountains. After unloading all his equipment and supplies, Cravey shook the pilot's hand, telling him, I will walk out a rich man and won't see you in Phoenix. He was never seen again. Several years later, James Cravey's headless body was discovered. In February 1951, Dr. John Burns of Oregon State was found shot dead in the Superstition Mountains. 
while hunting for the treasure. Four years later, the body of Martin Zyrotho of New York was discovered, shot through the head. In December 1959, the corpse of Stanley Fernandez, a gold prospector, was unearthed from a shallow grave. Four days later, the headless body of Franz Herrer was spotted. In 1961, the skeleton of Heimer Bohen was found. Another skeleton discovered in 1964 probably belonged to Jay Clapp, who had been missing for three years. All in all, 44 men have lost their lives in this century while searching for the mine. Some of them died after getting lost and running out of food and drink, but most of them were murdered. The bodies of six were found without their heads. Who killed them? Was it, as some people say, the Apaches, who do not want people on their land? Or is it someone else, jealously guarding the secret of the lost Dutchman mine? In spite of all these mysterious deaths, the search for the mine is continuing. This book was published in 1989. Who knows how many more lost in our lives since then. Anyway, uh, that's all for today. Next time we bring this story to its conclusion. This book to its conclusion, it's reading to its conclusion, whichever you which uh, you wish to say. Anyway, I'll see you then. See ya!